Now you're probably ready to dislike the video because of the highly controversial title, but this is a hot takes video. Now, as we did last time in the previous hot takes video, I decided to make a Twitter thread and kind of invite people to give me their hottest takes. Now, while last time we focused primarily on just Smash Bros hot takes, this time around, we're also going to include some general hot takes. And also guys, do make sure to subscribe if you watch often, but are not subscribed and also hit the notifications so you keep up with these daily sweet uploads. Anyway, it is time for controversy and spiciness. The crowd should be way farther away from the players and noise canceling headphones should be available for any player. People who have a attention deficit or cannot think right under pressure will be at a natural disadvantage and I think it would only be fair for everyone. On one side, I do think that players being so close to the spectators does add a layer that is not about the game, but more about dealing with outsider pressure. Like, I guess there's a purest type of angle where you can argue, yeah, well, if we were both playing in a room that is completely quiet and it was just about me against the opponent, you could make it more about the game rather than dealing with like some people heckling in the crowd. But at the same time, pretty much the way any type of sporting event or just anything sports, really, there is always an audience. And it's just the way competition goes in just pretty much any type of format. There is always going to be people watching, whether they're watching online or they're watching in person. A competitor has to be able to handle the pressure. Otherwise, they're probably not that good in a competitive environment and it's just a hard cold truth here's the take coffee does not help people get through the day so on your mind just eat a good breakfast well i do think that some people definitely abuse caffeine to just kind of get through the day to the point that they just you know just drink it out of habit even if they don't need it to that point i feel like it doesn't really help you get through the day and some people feel like coffee should be all they need in the morning than having a good nutritious breakfast right i feel like in that regard then coffee it doesn't actually help you get through the day speaking from someone as me that actually has a good diet right now and i've been having a good diet for you know a year at this point in time because i've been losing weight almost lost 100 pounds i am still a very low energy type of person and it doesn't matter really what i do it just feel like if i'm not drinking coffee at times it's really hard for me to make videos pretty much every single time before i record a video for you guys i have to drink one to two cups of coffee because otherwise i'm not nearly as animated i feel like i like energy i feel like i'm sleepy and it's just constantly um, a lack of energy so speaking as someone that i do feel like you know things like coffee really help me through the day i have to fundamentally disagree with this but there is also some truth to your statement world of light is better than substance emissary the reason is because world light gives you much more of a long-term commitment than subspace emissary ever could subspace has the cutscenes but it does not give you the feeling of reward when you beat world light 100 percent the payoff for beating it cannot be compared subspace is heavily carried by the cutscene and doesn't just feel like smash when playing the platform and no one talks about how nicely drawn wall is and how the insane amount of content and the amount of references it has look at all the spits the trophies but more also world light is very active and you don't have to just fight your way through countless of battles even though it is sometimes okay that's the moment where your argument went from sounding somewhat reasonable to kind of just falling apart the reason world light is not the best is because it tends to be extremely repetitive and they essentially just try to give you an adventure mode but basically by around half of it you pretty much realize you're basically doing the same over and over and over again just some random fight with like six or seven type of different gimmicks pretty much on rotation while there are some really interesting theme fights and some really interesting boss fights outside of the boss fights and a little bit of the lore it is a very uninteresting one because brawl set the bar extremely high with subspace the amount of cutscene and world building that that game did were out of control and it's just hard to beat which is why a lot of people feel that subspace emissary is still the best smash has always been about characters crossing over with different characters from different franchises but the cutscenes actually gave us meaningful interactions like you always wanted to see how luigi will react with king diddy or how this character will react to that or maybe how maybe mario and link will work together as a team and because of the way they story built the characters despite having no dialogue whatsoever it is a work of art in my opinion you should 100 take your channel to three times a week as soon as you possibly can up the meaningfully on youtube up your twitter interactions and get tiktok for silly dancing and slice of life stuff now i'm not joking at all Doing so will give your YouTube more importance, your Twitter more interactions, and TikTok, you can get more people to care about you. And that is no insult. You do great work. You just need to do less of it. I'll be honest with you guys. The reason we do daily uploads is simply because I feel like if I'm not constantly putting out content and constantly putting out ideas, I just feel like it's very easy to fall back into relevancy. And it's pretty much the entire concept of what I talked about earlier in terms of how YouTubers, at some point in time, they tend to fiend for drama or tend to fiend for controversy because those things up views. Maybe I don't feel all the way on that scale, like, you know, maybe some of the more controversial YouTubers on this platform sit i still feel like i have to overwork myself because i feel like i am on a constant daily battle for my audience essentially like i have to put a video every day i have to come up with interesting ideas it's a constant struggle that you have to deal with and for me a big reason of i would love to do like four or five videos a week or just less videos because it will give me more time to do more other things you know not just free time but just like if I wanted to do like a podcast, if I wanted to do like a second channel of sorts, it will allow for more free time. Recently, we've been really, really struggling with daily uploads because there are not that many meaningful things to make videos about. Smash is not getting updated in multiple months. There's just no tournaments going on. There's just nothing for me to really cover. And it's become to the point where we're just like, man, what the hell are we making tomorrow? <laughs> The issue is that while well, there are things that you can make videos about, it doesn't mean that it's an interesting video that provides something new to the table or means that it will have an interesting title or interesting theme for the thumbnail. It has to fall 
between very specific criteria, and it becomes very, very stressful. Ultimate is not a fun game to play competitively unless you're at a high top level. I actually disagree. I think that it's the complete opposite. Let me explain with an example. One of my biggest passions in real life is motocross. I absolutely love riding dirt bikes, but I have absolutely no skill. Lady. I am not good. I'm sloppy. I'm slow. And generally, when you look at me going to the track, I look like I have no idea what I'm doing. But I have a lot of fun and I really enjoy myself. So even though I'm not racing, I'm not doing it competitively, and I'm certainly not looking to make absolutely any money from it, I still go out there and have a lot of fun. I think for a lot of lower skill level players in Smash, it is pretty much the same concept. They enjoy playing the game. They enjoy talking to other people. They enjoy being in a social environment where they get to interact via a medium that they enjoy, which is the video game, or in this case, Smash Ultimate. One thing that I've come to learn with experience is that the easiest way to kill a passion is to have pressure. This is a big reason why I lost so much passion for Smash in general, because from my years as a competitive player, where it only mattered if I won the tournament, I never considered it to have fun. I never even cared about how much I was enjoying this. It was only about winning. I felt like people that were going 0-2 at the event were having more fun than I did. And I think that's when it really hit me. And I decided that maybe I should probably step away from competitive because I just don't think I'm meant for this anymore. Hot take. OnlyFans was solely made for adult entertainment, especially women. They can simply take lewd pics or videos of themselves and post it at a price, and they make bang without even having to work hard. Sometimes they could be even be trolling and make simps pay for the subscriptions to see their pictures, only to get absolutely troll and those use men to get money without having to do extra work like college or whatever to get real legit money. I've seen this kind of take a lot on social media, especially because things like OnlyFans or just in general, this type of content has gotten very popular as of recently. So this type of take I've seen many times. My sense has always been that people should never be shamed or ashamed for whatever they do for a living. The way it's always worked is that if there is a demand for a certain product, there will be that product can sell. The only reason things like OnlyFans work is because people buy on it. People do subscribe. People do support. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think everyone is entitled to do with their body what they wish. The same way I can do whatever I want with my body and no one else has a choice, I think everyone should be allowed to do whatever they want. In terms of the work hard and that you only really deserve to make a living if you're working hard, I mean, for me, speaking as a YouTuber, pretty much everyone thinks that the life of a YouTuber is extremely easy. You know, you guys just post videos for a living, doing whatever you make a living, sitting in your office. You know, it's not really a lot of work. But, you know, for me as a YouTuber, you know, I've been sleeping on my office. My matter of fact, actually, if you, <laughs> you actually look at the side of my office here. You actually can see that I've been sleeping on my office. because That's a little mattress right there because, you know, we've been really, really struggling with deadlines and I've had to pretty much sleep in my office to make some of these deadlines. We have a team of four people. People are constantly working on difficult deadlines and it's very difficult to continue doing uh, daily uploads in general, but we try our best, you know, and it's a lot of work. A lot of people say that being a YouTuber, you know, it's a privileged work, whatever, whatever, and they kind of demean my, my job the same way. This is why I have a lot of empathy when people say things like, oh, they don't work hard, they don't do anything. When obviously, when you look from an outsider perspective, everything looks easy. You look at a job, you look at what someone else is doing to make a living, and then you go, hmm, I could do that. Mm, that's easy. But then it's always easy to look at things from a service level. No one sees, everyone sees the peak of the iceberg, but no one sees the bottom of it. Ultimate is way better as a casual game and is one of the least fun games to play competitively in the Smash franchise. Too many characters, matchups, and bad mechanics like Buffer and not be able to run through characters on a bit small online make it hard to even practice for most people. I agree and disagree with some of this fundamentally. Ultimate is probably one of the best casual games for in general, simply because the game is so flashy, there's so much variety, and people can watch the game at a competitive format or even non-competitive, and there's always something different going on. It is a game that gives you inherently a lot of content, it's very pleasing to the eye, just sounds good, looks good. It's just everything about it. It's interesting for a spectator perspective. From a playing perspective that is not a competitive format, it is the same way. It's just very fun to play. When it comes down to a competitive format, though, where you're trying to abuse nuts and crannies between the game and you get to the very little details where you're just, you know, trying to do everything you can in order to win, in my opinion, the game gets ugly real fast. But it is very telling when I have conversations with pro players behind closed doors or maybe in DMs. People just say things like, man, I really don't like this game. It's really frustrating. It's really random. It's too mad this and that i mean i've heard pretty much all of it now keep in mind there are some pro players that absolutely love the game but there are also a fair amount that just hate it zero chic in his prime was way better than his diddy in his prime that is actually 100 percent true i always thought my chic was much better than my diddy and always made me sad that chic was so nerfed because i really felt like i was one level higher on my chic for sure i always felt like my diddy had more holes than my chic Kingdom Hearts is some hot garbage. There is nothing redeeming about the story at all, and most of it doesn't even make sense. It's become way too convoluted. Plus, I don't even think the writers know what the hell is going on at this point. Plus, the combat is essentially mashing. It only rides on Hyper Disney and Final Fantasy features at service level. While I do think a big portion of why Kingdom Hearts is exciting is definitely because of Disney and definitely because of Final Fantasy, I actually think the game from a gameplay perspective, at least the really good ones gameplay was like 1 and 2 and actually 3 after the patches, I actually think the game is very interesting and fun on a gameplay manner. The reason I think so many people think you can just mash 
smash through the game is because people tend not to play in the hardest difficulties. If you actually go and play any of these games on critical difficulty or on proud difficulty in the first game, you quickly come to realize that a lot of the time you cannot mash through these things. Not to mention that the games are obviously meant to be more accessible because it is a game addressed at Disney fans, addressed at general Final Fantasy fans, but they actually have done a really good job at balancing hardcore gamers and casual gamers. I will say I'm pretty much on the very end of the hardcore spectrum of Kingdom Hearts. I have found the game to be very challenging and it really tests your reflexes and memory and just a lot of different things that, you know, makes the game at times for me feel more difficult than Dark Souls. Large Twitter accounts that always talk about how toxic Twitter is ruins it for the smaller accounts. Twitter is actually a lot of fun if you're trying to have fun and not have that large of an account. It's only the small percent of toxic people that come by and if you can deal with. Twitter is actually fun and positive. Just speaking from Smash Twitter, there are a ton of people that met many friends there. Hearing top players say Twitter bad actually ruins it for normal people, even if they don't experience the toxic side of Twitter. The thing about Twitter is that it's not inherently good or bad. It's just that Twitter is so open that pretty much anybody can go and interact with you. It is the type of medium that is so open. So pretty much when you have a take about anything, it goes from a take that you intended only for your friends, maybe only for your followers. And now it can be seen on a global scale for people that never really intended to even know about it or that even know about you. This is also also made worse by the fact that communicating online with people via just text is not a good and complete form of communication. Generally, when you talk to someone, you have body language. You can see their expressions. You can see how they react. You can see how they pronounce things. For example, I could say something like, you're stupid. And if I read that in text, people can interpret that and read that in their own head whatever way they wish. They can add it and make it seem like it was really hurtful. They can see it as a joke, even though it wasn't. That is the fundamental problem of Twitter. A lot of the time, people can say highly controversial things that actually could be pretty reasonable if they manage to explain themselves. The character limit, the fact that they cannot actually have body language with it means that a lot of the time it is much better to have controversial conversations or opinions via video format, which is why it's a lot easier to have these type of conversations on a video format like on YouTube. Banjo is the worst DLC character. I disagree. You can pull up some cool, cool stuff with Banjo. I will argue that Bile is probably worse. I feel you, but Bile has a lot of cool stuff and somebody is more consistent than Banjo, but I see your point. I think Banjo, from a gameplay perspective in Smash, is a very boring character. He's just pretty much just a zoner. He camps, runs away. Pretty much does his best at just avoiding confrontation directly and just chooses to do it with other tools. And the fact that so many people don't play him is because inherently he's just not one of the more fun characters because you pretty much are abusing the same things over and over again. The character tends to get very repetitive. For him as an inclusion in the game though, I think he's one of the hypest announcements and I think he's one of the hypest DLC characters. The character moved DLC passes because people were excited for Banjo. He was one of the most requested characters and I think a lot of fans were very happy about it. Pokemon No Way This is only like because it's Pokemon. If you compare it with other RPGs like most Final Fantasy games for example, Pokemon is actually a pretty bad game. I disagree that Pokemon is a bad game because there are a lot of extremely mediocre games. I mean, have you ever seen some of these very weird and shady games on Steam? There's a lot of actually truly awful games, bro. I do think that Pokemon gets a massive pass because it is Pokemon. I actually think a lot of different RPGs have managed to have a much more interesting and compelling characters, much more interesting story. Sometimes even though the music is one of the large points of Pokemon, some of the RPGs have come out with amazing and beautiful soundtracks. And one thing I know for sure is that it doesn't seem to me like Pokemon is trying to make groundbreaking progress. It just seems to me that they kind of just found the formula. They're sticking to it and they're not trying to innovate much more every game. They'll maybe introduce a couple things every game. My issue with Pokemon though has always been the fact that it's very formal-like. It doesn't tend to surprise me and outside of me playing it competitively or me playing it with my friends, it tends to just, you know, be the one time campaign that we do. We kind of beat it in like a couple days and then we just, you know, don't bother with it ever again. Even though the Prodigy series may have been exciting and gave these kids the credit they deserve, I feel like they may have ultimately been a bad idea because I constantly see 13 or 12 year olds kids who are calling out uh, DDD and Rad and it must be very stressful given their young age. The way I see it is that while they are kids, at the same time, a lot of them have also asked me to be on the channel. While there have been times where we have simply covered something that happened or we have simply, you know, gone out of our way to cover like a tournament result or maybe something that happened within the community, the vast majority of the time, these people have asked me to be on the channel or they had an interesting story. And when I asked them if they wanted to participate in the channel, they were all about it, knowing exactly what will happen. While you could argue that they're kids and they don't really understand what it's going, I honestly been keeping up with how everyone has been dealing with everything. Didi has pretty much made a very successful brand at this point. He's one of the more popular Smash Twitter accounts right now. And pretty much everyone else I feature on the channel has, you know, in a lot of ways, gotten a lot of reward for it. They can stream if they want to. They can make YouTube videos. Like these guys could set up maybe a career if they work really hard for it. And because, you know, I helped them out with that, then they can transform this into something else. Some of the parents of these kids even emailed me and said that, you know, I 
pretty much changed the lives of some of these kids for the positive. They, they used to be very stressed after school or used to deal with certain problems. And now because, you know, they have this new medium and new positivity and new spotlight, they have been enjoying their lives better. And that's the point where I realized, OK, we're doing more good than potential bad. But it is a good point of criticism that you offer. Oh, boy, here it goes. Kink shaming should not be frowned upon because you shouldn't be sharing that sort of stuff publicly in the first place and then complain when people call you weird for it. People should keep that stuff to themselves because no one wants to know about it. I think the problem with people being kink shamed is that essentially it boils down to people being ashamed for being and revealing who they really are and the reason it sucks is because anytime you reveal your true self and people just make you feel bad for just being yourself it's a very negative experience i've experienced things like this myself when i play video games or watch anime in high school and people thought i was just you know a stupid loser that you know should go do something better with their life right well obviously this is a much different thing i think the issue should never be about shaming people for who they really are this is why i think things like kick shaming is just not a good thing there is such a thing as a moment and time to talk about certain things you know but like if we're having a random conversation right like i'm just at the supermarket Okay. And then the lady comes up like, hey, can you pass me that tomato? And then I said, pass me the tomato. She goes, I really like to get railed by... You know, I will be pretty weirded out, even though I'm not kink shaming her. I will definitely be weirded out because this is not the right place and time to talk about that sort of thing. Right. So my mind is one of those things where like, I feel like the context of the situation and then also the time and place matters a lot. He was sure to have dropped Smash Ultimate from the lineup of Mihaws. Well, Nintendo realized their game has bad online compared to Arms Online, which is pretty amazing. Even then, a lot of the online evil games have terrible online and the ones that have good online are set off to side events. Personally, really excited for Killer Instinct. My tinfoil theory is that Nintendo probably did not want the bad publicity from having smash ultimate at evo because it would have been an absolute absolute crap show people will have complained left and right if someone who was not perceived to deserve to win evo would have been absolutely harassed it would have been the drama of the year and while my youtuber side of it was thinking hmm that would have made for a couple videos at the same time i also feel like nintendo probably made the best call as a company and because it's a company they care about their good pr they definitely did not want the bad PRs. Or maybe Evo saw that everyone complains about Smash Online and they were like, well, we don't want to deal with that, so we're not going to add it. Whichever one decided whether Nintendo or Evo, it makes sense to me. And there you have it. There's the hot takes for this week. I hope you guys appreciated the fact that we added non Smash Bros. takes as well. Do let me know if you guys are interested in more of these. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys around tomorrow. Bye bye.